Alright, what is up everybody? So welcome back to another episode of Skate and Preserve. So as always, I just want to start off by thanking everybody that's tuning in, everybody that's been liking, commenting, all that good stuff. I seriously appreciate each and every single one of y'all. And uh, everybody that's been hitting me up on Instagram, man, appreciate every single one of y'all as well. Um, if you don't, go ahead, follow me at Skate and Preserve. Uh, that's where I post a lot of my collection. That's where I'm more active in a uh, social media standpoint. So um, definitely, if you don't, go ahead, hit me with a follow over there. Say what's up. Let me know you came from YouTube. Um, but yeah, man, we're going to get right into this video. I'm pretty stoked on this one. Uh, I've had this one kind of in my head for a while. I've kind of wanted to do it for a little bit, and the time's finally here. So uh, I'm pretty stoked on it. But um, before I start off on the main topic of this video, the reason you clicked on this video, uh, I want to give a quick public service announcement. And that is in regards to shrink wrap. Now, I picked up this board, um, I think I got it like a week or two ago. It is a uh, Garristere foundation board. This was his uh, Dirt Squid model. I'm not sure on the year of this one. I want to say it's like early 2000s, 2003 or so, 2004. Not really sure, but um, I bought this thing off eBay. It was new old stock and uh, still in the shrink wrap. Some of the shrink wrap kind of tore from where the individual had it uh, hanging. And uh, I went to remove the shrink wrap and unfortunately, as you can probably see, the shrink wrap has melded to the graphic itself. It kind of tore a little bit of the graphic off right there. So um, I was able to remove the top portion of the uh, shrink wrap. I tried to remove some, as you can see right there. It's kind of removed, but it's still kind of stuck on here. So um, this is a case of the person I bought it from either not having this stored correctly or not having this in a climate controlled environment. Generally, this will happen with uh, heat pressed boards. With heat press boards, they lay the graphic on almost like a big uh, transparent sticker. They run it through a heat press, hence the name heat pressed graphic. And uh, when the shrink wrap stays on these, if it's not in a correct environment, it's not climate controlled, it's not stored properly over the years, this shrink wrap will adhere itself to the graphic. And when you attempt to remove it, like I did, either pieces will come off and you'll be stuck with patches of shrink wrap on it, or it will just tear the entire graphic off um, as you peel off the shrink wrap. I've seen a few collectors that have experienced this. Um, and now I've experienced it myself, so I'm kind of bummed on it. I mean, honestly, I'm still fucking stoked on this board because Gareth Stair used to be one of my favorite skateboarders. Uh, I was super into Foundation, you know, Corey Duffel, all those guys that were just uh, super hesh, super punk rock. And i um, still stoked to have this board in my collection. But I just wanted to give a warning to all the uh, collectors out there, new and old. Um, if you're planning on collecting, you're not really planning on selling your boards, I would highly suggest removing your shrink wrap from your boards. I'm getting ready to go through my entire collection and remove all the shrink wrap from my entire uh, deck collection once my poly bags come in the mail. And um, I'm probably going to do a video after I get them all unwrapped just going through my whole collection. So uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But uh, yeah, shrink wrap, man, it'll kill your boards if they're not properly stored. And man, I mean, poly bags are the way to go because poly bags are quite a bit thicker than, you know, regular shrink wrap. They're more environmentally friendly. They uh, protect if you've got your boards laid one on top of the other stacked up. They'll uh, protect from rubbing against each other, getting that little storage damage you tend to see on older boards. So... Yeah, my personal opinion, poly bags are the way to go, man. I used to cringe at the thought of unwrapping my entire collection, but now I'm kind of cringing at the fact that some of my boards might end up like this if I don't unwrap them quickly. So um, that's just my thoughts on that, two cents on that. Um, obviously, if you don't want to remove your shrink wrap, don't. Just know that this is a uh, situation that might happen if you don't properly store and unwrap your boards. But that is just a uh, quick little side note I wanted to put in here before I began on the rest of the video. So, uh, yeah, um, I fucked up. I filmed this video uh, last night and uh, unboxed this bad boy right here. And right towards the end of the video, my camera decided to die and uh, corrupted the video, I guess, because I can't find it. So, we're gonna... Uh, 
unbox this box that's already been unboxed for the second time. But uh, yeah, so this video right here is on my personal favorite skateboard artist, Mark Foster, aka Foss. He is a uh, individual that uh, has really done a lot for the skateboard community. Um, got his own company, Heroin Skateboards. He does a lot of art for other companies, which I'm going to get into. I've got this stack of boards right here that are all far Foss artwork boards. So um, we're going to piece through that. I'm going to talk on it a little bit. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this stuff out for the second time and just kind of show you. So I picked this up recently. This is from uh, Heroin's recent drop. And this thing, I'm still so stoked on this thing. So this right here is the limited egg edition heroin skateboards the egg plush toy got the little dangly feet little dangly arms it's actually a little bit bigger than i was expecting so um yeah i'm super stoked on that and uh why is it a stuffed egg you may be asking well i will explain that after i pull this board out Got a nice little sheet of black grip. I don't know, it's kind of unbranded. I don't really fuck with any grip tape except for Mob. Personally, I just really like grippy ass grip tape. But um, this board right here, so this is one of the egg shapes that have become so notorious over the past several years. As you can see, it's got a very kind of football shape. It tapers up on the nose and tail and kind of bows out on the middle giving it that egg shape so this is actually the first egg that i have in my collection and this is the space egg it is 9.4 inches got the heroin skateboards hit right up top there got the egg logo rip off the uh alien movie logo and then it says in space no one can hear you slam also kind of ripping off that movie but super stoked on that aliens a super dope movie so um really dope to have this and uh it also i don't know how well you can see that it has the razor top construction on it and you can see it right there on the back heroin skateboards razor top construction so what razor top construction is let me get a little closer to the camera most boards well all boards when they cut them out and they shape them they buff them they round off the edges down here and round off the edges on top but with the razor top construction they leave this part right here kind of uh, sharp. They keep an edge on it. And I've never skated one of the razor top construction boards. I do have a couple in my collection, but basically the whole idea behind that is when you're skating, when you're doing kick flips, heel flips, tray flips, whatever, having this little extra edge up there, it's supposed to help you flick it a little bit better than it would on a round edge. Um, I can imagine it probably does help, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pick up one of these razor tops that uh, I don't want to keep in perfect condition for my collection. Um, but that's to be seen. I guess one day I'll probably have to grab two of the same board because uh, I really love heroin skateboards. They're super fucking sick. And uh, yeah, man, I really love this board. This thing's sick. It's going to look dope on my wall. So that is the unboxing. So before I get into the rest of these boards right here, I kind of want to talk about Foss as an artist, as a... Uh, skateboard company owner um you know why i personally like him so much so uh, i'm just gonna jump into that give a little background on him so foss was born grew up in london and um at the age of 14 he started skateboarding and uh you know from there on he went to college got a, a degree in design studies something like that i'm not for sure if it was a bachelor and associate's degree but he did go to college for that and then uh, after college, he wound up kind of immersing himself in the local skateboard scene. He worked for Slam, Slam City Skates in London, and uh, he worked as their sales director for quite a while. And uh, while he was working for Slam City Skates, he wound up uh, founding a skateboard company called Landscape Skateboards. I've never personally seen any of those. Um, I mean, I'm sure they're probably pretty rare and probably a pretty good collector's piece right now but uh i've never seen any personally but uh yeah he did that for a while man he um was rocking with landscape for a little while and then in 2006 i don't know if he quit landscape and moved on um in 06 to altamont but 
Back in 06, he decided to uh, be part of the founding members of Altamont Apparel. If you remember Altamont, that was uh, repped by a lot of the America Baker kind of crew like them. Um, I know Andrew Reynolds was one of like their top people they had on the team. And um, if you remember the Altamont kind of typography, it was very similar to this uh, kind of scratchy, almost tagged out like cursive type deal that uh foss is pretty known for so they uh they have kind of the same typography but uh i actually didn't know that until recently that he was part of altamont um but yeah he did all that he was the art director for altamont and then in 2011 after you know he'd done landscape he'd done the altamont thing he decided to move out to la and either started heroin skateboards i think he started a little bit before then but uh heroin skateboards began being distributed by baker boys distribution which distributes you know shake giant uh happy hour psychedelic they distribute the death wish boards you know that whole group that is notorious for uh you know the baker videos the baker team america team all that so they started getting distributed by them in 2011 and um i'm pretty sure that whole being distributed by baker boys came from the fact that foss had had five collaborations with america i'm not sure if he had five at this point but he definitely had some at that point one of which i have you may remember from the last video or a couple videos before the ridgemont foss shoes this was actually the shoe the collaboration that introduced me to foss as an artist and really introduced me into really kind of looking at shoes a different way looking at artwork a different way um seeing these shoes i didn't know who foss was you know i knew america i was super stoked on america but when i saw this collaboration and just seeing this weird ass artwork and designs on here it really uh intrigued me piqued my curiosity and um ever since then man i've really been into foss i've been following him a little bit um at that point and then you know i started noticing heroin skateboards and uh it's kind of like what the fuck man heroin skateboards why who the fuck names a skateboard company heroin skateboards you know i was like is this guy just trying to be edgy as hell and hoping that people buy his shit is this guy actually on fucking heroin you know i was like 16 17 at the time when i started uh seeing heroin skateboards so i really didn't know what what the fuck was up with it but um as time went on you know i kind of learned a little bit about the company uh and it's funny because foss is actually straight edge he doesn't drink doesn't do drugs none of that stuff and um the way he went about naming his company heroin skateboards is the fact that he doesn't use drugs doesn't drink and he sees skateboarding as his drug you know that's what he's addicted to that's what he does to feel good and um something happened where he was injured and he was laying in the hospital and you know he'd been kind of tossing some ideas around for a new skateboard company and he decided to go with heroin skateboards and um you know here in the past couple years man they've really been kind of ramping up and uh getting a lot more exposure so i'm super stoked to see that man but um you know before he really got into the whole heroin skateboards notoriety he had a lot of collaborations not just with america but he had them with some big name companies zero element real toy machine recently he did a sick ass collaboration with blind skateboards um he did a ton of boards for baker and death wish as well which i didn't know i was actually like super stoked to find that out because baker and death wish were like the company i grew up on you know foundation and all those guys uh so yeah i mean when i found out that he was a big part in those graphics i was super stoked on that so um yeah and i think uh, a lot of the reason the notoriety for this brand has kind of come up has been because of these egg shaped boards i think they released the first one in 2016 i believe it was a daniel shimizu pro model and uh over the course of the next three or four years they released i think like six different uh renditions of the egg different shapes graphics all that stuff and really in this past year is when the egg boards have really taken off they've had like seven different shapes and graphics with the egg shape so really you know in the past year they've released more of these shapes than they did in the 
three or four years prior to it. So I think a lot of people are really getting stoked on them. Um, you know, it's really hard to find these boards. Uh, they sell out instantly, almost instantly. Within a day or two online, they sell out at Baker Boys. Um, I've been lucky enough to snag this one and a couple of these down here from my local skate shop. Generally, they'll sell out on the Baker Boys heroin site. And then a few days to a week later, they'll start getting sent into skate shops. So I usually try and uh, poke my head into my skate shop down here in Charlotte and kind of check them out. But um, this one, I think I actually lucked out. And uh, yeah, because I got it out of the box. I got it off the heroin site. So uh, yeah, I lucked out on that. Man, when I seen this thing, I'm a fucking sucker for goofy ass little accessories the skateboard companies put out. So when I saw this guy, I knew I had to get him. I'm going to throw him on my little bullshit accessory shelf whenever uh, I get the chance and also I know I've shown this before but this is their most recent video Earth Goblin and uh, as you can see they released this fucking thing on VHS so I'm super stoked on that uh, you know me I've got a huge VHS tape collection of skateboards and other videos so uh had to get this thing i think it was like 28 fucking bucks but well worth it man that thing sold out it's hard to find now so glad i picked that one up when i did but um you know one of the main things that i've really seen that makes me really like foss as an artist other than his you know absolute artistic you know just experience and just the way he sees things and the things that he draws and the way he does his artwork is that he stays super fucking busy you know he runs the heroin skateboards he does all the graphics for them well most of them i don't know if he does every single graphic but he does most of the graphics for heroin skateboards um he does a magazine that he puts out from time to time he does a lot of uh art shows, art pieces, and he also freelances his work to a lot of skate shops, skate companies, and it's not just those big name companies that I listed earlier, The Real, Toy Machine, all that shit. He freelances his work to small companies. He freelances them to not so big skate shops, like not nationally known skate shops. Um, one of which was Escapist out in uh, Kansas City. That was the skate shop I always went to whenever I went to visit my cousin out in Kansas City. And uh, recently he did a collaboration, I think like a year or two ago with them. And uh, I missed out. I should have grabbed one of those boards, but I didn't get one. So hopefully in the future I'll be able to cop one. But um, these top four boards that I have are actually pretty small, not well-known companies, at least not yet. Um, they're fairly new they don't have a ton of followers on their social media um i don't think they really have a team that i'm aware of but um yeah so i really want to get into these so these top two right here were part of a series by grandma skateboards so i had never heard of grandma skateboards until i saw this collaboration right here and as soon as i saw this shit i knew i had to fucking get it because uh these graphics on these two boards are a rendition and ode to a collaboration Foss did years back with Baker Skateboards. He did a whole series of like six or seven boards and they were all in his, you know, in his art style. And they were Dia de los Muertos uh, inspired, as these ones are as well. As you can see, they got the flowers, the sugar skull. So this is Grandma Skateboards on it, and because it's Grandma Skateboards, you got the little uh, crochet knitting needle and ball of yarn down there. So I thought that was super sick. Um, and then when I got this board, I didn't even realize they were going to have this, but when I got it, they personalized it for me. They put the date when it was pressed, and then they said, finished for Rodney on... 1028 so super stoked on that man i finally got my name on a board you know but uh yeah man i didn't expect that little um that little extra uh laser etching on the top and then they got the laser etching right there with the little grandma sugar skull has 19 out of 35 has the size on it so i'm super stoked on this one there were only 35 of each graphic made and there were only two graphics so 70 boards in total and I was lucky enough to get one of each. And I don't know how well you can see it, but the shape on this thing, God, I wish I would have grabbed two because you know me, I love my square noses and tails on boards and these motherfuckers are square as shit. 
God, I wish I would have grabbed two. But hey, I got them. And that's all that matters. So this one, again, is one of the uh, Dia de los Muertos boards. And this one is called the Walking Muertos. So as you can see, you got the grandma hit up there, you got the flowers in the background, grandma skateboards, and then they got the uh, Sugar Skull inspired skeleton, and being true to the grandma skateboards moniker, they got them using a walker. So I thought that was pretty sick, man. I knew as soon as I saw these, I had to, had to have them, man. I saw these, uh, God, it's been several months ago, I saw Foss, I think, post that he did these graphics. And I went, followed Grandma Skateboards. I don't think they even had like a thousand followers yet on their Instagram. And so I went ahead, I set my uh, notifications for them. And as soon as those popped up, I grabbed one. I think this was the first one I grabbed. And uh, oh, man, I started thinking about it. I was like, shit, dude, I got to grab the other one. So like a week later, they still had the other one in stock. So I ordered it again. You know, I had to pay double shipping, but... Uh, I guess they saw the same name on the same order. They shipped them both together. So that was pretty dope, man. I was pretty excited to get both the boards together. But um, yeah, those right there are definitely like one of my favorite pickups from this year. Those two grandma skateboards. Um, so these other two are from a different company, but they are also Foss artwork. And yeah, man, these ones are sick too. These are a couple of my favorites. So I'll show you the first one. This was the one I actually originally saw. So this is junkadelic skateboards it's got that top hit right there it's dipped in white and boom the underside right here so you see right there junkadelic skateboards times foss got the little uh foss style art in there and then this head right here that's um the junkadelic music logo now i don't know a whole lot on this company but uh I know they're like a record label, and then they also have Junkadelic Skateboards. Um, not really too sure on all that. I saw on the Pinswood site, that is the people that uh, press their boards, that these are, they're a company from Paris, I think, and they're selling them through the Pinswood site. So go ahead, check out Pinswood. You might be able to grab one of these. I'm not for sure. It does have a little five pressed into the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that, but... I don't know what that means. I don't know if this is like number five. I don't have any fucking clue. But that one's super sick. This one right here might be my favorite Foss board that I have. Because you'll see here in a second. So you got the top right there. This is the Junkadelic collaboration between Benny Ponte and Foss. So this is a three-way collaboration right there. As you can see, Junkadelic, Benny Ponte, guest model. And you may recognize this board. I don't know, maybe judging by that basketball on top, you may be able to guess what it is. But uh, if you're not too well versed in your 90s skateboard companies and who Vinnie Ponte was, then uh, this graphic might not stoke you out as much. But boom! So we got Vinnie Ponte. We got the homeboy basketball dude with the New York. Got the artwork by Foss down there. Now this is actually an ode to a board Vinny Ponte had when he was on Tree Fort. And uh, Tree Fort is now defunct, but uh, yeah, this is basically a rendition of that. It had a cartoon graphic of a guy holding a basketball like that, crossing somebody up, and this one has just been uh, kind of uh, switched around with Foss's artwork. Again, you got that logo right there. That is the Junkadelic uh, head logo right there. Again, I'm not too sure about Junkadelic skateboards. I didn't really find a lot on them when I researched them, but uh, I just thought these were super sick. Knew as soon as I saw them, I had to grab them. This thing's going to look sick hanging sideways on my wall. So uh, definitely had to grab this one, man. So like I said, go check out Pinswood uh, Distribution. You might be able to cop one of these. You might not. They might be sold out. I grabbed them a while ago. All right, so now we're going to get into a couple other heroin boards I have. So this one right here, I think this was uh, this was one of the first heroin boards I grabbed, well, to, for my collection. I've uh, skated one heroin board in the past. Um, it was like it had like a death metal logo or something on the bottom. I think it was the Roots graphic. I'm not really for sure, but... Um, yeah, so this was the first one I grabbed for my actual collection. I've had it for about a year now. 
But uh, you got the big heroin hit right there on the back. And this one right here is the Deer Man of Dark Woods Pro model right there. You got the Raven, got the heroin hit right there. And yeah, this one is called the Deer Man of Dark Woods Raven graphics. So uh, if you don't remember Deer Man of Dark Woods, he was kind of like an anomaly they were uh he was part of barrier cult I, he still is part of barrier cult but they were those guys that dressed up in ski masks and listened to fucking black metal and only skated jersey barriers and were all into satanic rituals on barriers and shit so uh me being the young ass kid i was when i heard of deer man of dark woods of course i was fucking into that shit so um yeah when i saw deer man of dark woods got put on the team i was super stoked on that and uh I don't remember where I bought this board from. I bought it online somewhere. Maybe Tactics? I'm not for sure, but this one's super sick. It's got that silver kind of uh, reflective ink on black. So it's just a gnarly looking board. That's going to look uh, sick hanging, to a, hanging next to a couple of my other boards. So that one's super dope. Shape on it is pretty killer. So these ones right here, the last two that I have, are from the last season drop so not this most recent one but last season um and this one right here has the razor top construction on it as well you see that nice sharp edge and again we have got another deer man of dark woods board this is the skeletal graphic so it's pretty sick down here i don't know how well you can see it but it does say heroin h-e-r I O N, and then it's got the B A K U that is uh, the moniker for Barrier Cult, and then it's got the super sick uh, skeleton, Deer Man skeleton holding the bayonets. That's one of uh, Barrier Cult's logos, is those uh, old school bayonets, and then you got the Deer Man of Darkwoods hit right there. This one's super sick. I really wanted the one in purple but uh my local skate shop only had the orange one i kind of lucked out and grabbed this one so yeah that one's super sick it's gonna look sick hanging next to that other gear man board and then this one right here man a lot of people were going crazy for this one and again i kind of lucked out and was able to grab it from my local skate shop it's got that razor top construction on it again and this is the craig question scott board this is the chainsaw deck and I'm pretty sure you can guess why it is called the Chainsaw Deck. But again, it's got that reflective uh, metallic silver on it. Heroin Skateboards, Craig's Question, Scott. So yeah, man, this one's sick. I actually picked up the... Uh, I got it hanging on my wall so I don't have it uh, for the video. But I picked up... They did a... Uh, they did an ad for Craig uh, Scott. He's a lumberjack, I guess, by trade, as well as a fucking professional skateboarder. So they had this poster that was taken of him, like looking at this big ass tree holding a chainsaw, and this board came out in the same drop. So a lot of people were stoked on this, man. A lot of people bought this shit up. I've had several people ask me if I would sell this, and I just don't want to, man. It's a clean ass board. It's a. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a random graphic, but, I mean, it's pretty fitting. I mean, heroin kind of has random graphics like that. But, uh, yeah, I doubt I'll be selling this one anytime soon. So, this one's super sick. Super stoked on this one. But, yeah, that's really uh, my whole Foss deck collection, man. I just really wanted to do a video, show Foss some love. I mean, he is my favorite skateboard artist after all. Um, I mean, you know, I do have some other favorites, you know, of recent times. There's neck face and then older ones you know you got sean cliver he's super sick i got a lot of his strange love boards i think he's pretty uh pretty dope with what he does but um yeah man i just wanted to put this video out i know a couple people were stoked on seeing this video i was stoked on doing it so i wanted to throw it together for y'all but um yeah man keep your eyes peeled i do got some uh i mean to me big announcements for the channel and my instagram coming soon so keep your eyes peeled on the channel i'm going to be trying to do as many videos as i can in the upcoming weeks leading up to that and uh, if you don't already hit me up on uh, instagram at skate and preserve and uh shoot me a message but until then man y'all keep doing what you're doing damn uh keep liking my videos keep commenting i love seeing that shit so uh keep doing what y'all are doing and i'll check you on the next video